Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the ProTech TR5 or Tactical Response 5. There are a lot of different uh, numbers in the tactical response family. Um, this one is on the smaller side, which is kind of neat because it, it's actually still a full size knife. I will link all of the uh, Protec TR or tactical response series knives right down in the description. Uh, they are more or less available depending on when it is that you're watching, when it is that you're looking for them, right? I'll also link Protec knives right down in the description uh, so you can take a look at what else they've got going on. Protec is an amazing company and as far as I know, they don't actually make a model that I don't like. Uh, they're an amazing US-based uh, automatic knife company. They, they do make a few manuals and I've just been really happy with Protec in general. They are an extremely recommendable company and their knives are very high quality. We're going to talk all about this today. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. You can find a link for my Patreon right down in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a uh, measurement of this guy. So overall length of the Protec TR5 coming in at 7.5 inches overall. Blade length, three and a quarter. And your cutting edge is coming in at about 2.8, something like that. 2 point, yeah, about 2.8. Uh, thanks to a very large forward choil. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see there it's kind of in between. That's generally going to be the case here. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Spyderco Para 3? Once again, uh, sort of in between, a little bit longer, just a half an inch longer than the Spyderco Para 3. We'll find some similarities between those two knives. Last but not least, up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Mini Griptilian. Absolutely right in between all of these knives. Um, let's go ahead and talk about carry profile. So, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see that this knife is just a hair thicker, uh, definitely, but not by much. Just a little teeny tiny bit. How about length and height up against uh, the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3? You can see here, it's about the same handle length as the Para 3. Definitely shorter than the PM2 and nowhere near as tall as any of them. Um, let's go ahead and take a measurement of blade stock thickness here. I'm going to guess that this is like many Protex and it's come, it's going to come in somewhere around 120, 125 thousandths. And yeah, 123. So yeah, probably 125 thousandths. We are looking at uh, Type 3 hard code anodized 6061 T6 or aircraft aluminum, which is generally what you're going to get from Protec knives. I do like this material. Protec does a great job with it. Uh, a much better job than my camera is doing it focusing on this knife at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with that material at all. I actually really like it for EDC. And then we're looking at S35VN. Uh, the inside of this knife is solid aluminum. Uh, I don't know if you guys can actually see. We're going to have trouble because of the shadows. There's no milling on the inside, but this knife doesn't really need it. Let's go ahead and weigh the knife real quick. Weight on the Protec TR5. Coming in at 3.53 ounces, which is pretty good on in the ratio department. I don't have a problem with it. That's pretty lightweight to me. It may not be to you. This knife will be illegal in some areas, so be careful about that. It's also a switchblade. Definitely. This knife is an automatic knife or switchblade, so it's that's going to make it illegal, right? Um, so use your best judgment when you're deciding what you're going to carry. Let's go ahead and move on here. Um, so tactical response, that's what the TR means. And I think this knife is designed for and probably very popular by, um, you know, in, in the first responder community. And, you know, honestly, like a lot of Protex designs are going to serve really, really well. Um, in, I would imagine in, in that scenario, I'm not a first responder. I've never actually, uh, I've never been one. I can't speak on that. I'm going to guess the automatic nature of this knife and the powerful deployment of a Protec knife are very appealing to somebody who is a first responder and really does need to get their knife out, you know, reliably, um, and then be able to hold on to it. So I'm going to talk about ergonomics here. I want to be careful about, you know, that because I personally, I don't like when I, in a general EDC sense, which is what I'm going to use this for. And I'm going to guess the vast majority of people who actually decide to buy this knife will probably use it the same way that I do, right? So 
kind of go half and half on that. I don't like being confined to very specific spots on the knife, right? So you have this position and then you can choke up. On the larger versions of this knife, I would imagine it feels like a little bit more freedom, um, but I don't personally enjoy that. Though the position back here is comfortable where you have to put your fingers, um, it's actually more comfortable than the choked up position. This area right here, it starts to be a full circle, right? And then it cuts off right here and then there's this ramp right here. So you can get your finger in there, but it's not really ultra comfortable. So you can move around a little. You basically have two options unless you want to choke back and have your finger hanging off the end of it. But and if you want a full four finger grip, you've got this choice, which is probably the best one or the most comfortable one. And then you have this up here, which will work, but it's meh. It's okay. But for a first responder who needs the knife to deploy quickly and reliably, right? That automatic feature is definitely going to be appealing, I would imagine, for them. And then who, they also probably need a knife that they can really hold on to. That's going to work, right? It depends on who you are, what your preferences are, what you're actually going to use the knife for. So ergonomic lines, more or less preferable. That's that's essentially what I'm saying here. As per usual, this is a ProTech knife. The firing power is awesome. This knife will deploy. Unless you have a huge stick or something in the way of the tang and the stop pin, uh, it's going to deploy. It, there's actually recoil when you fire a ProTech. I, I love those, and that's great. I talk about this every single time that I talk about automatic knives. The benefit there is that if you really, if you're, you know, in an EDC situation, if you're working or something and, and your your other hand is busy, right, and you get to pull the knife out and you just want to get it out, you don't have to mess around with the whole like, oh, darn it, I missed the thumb and then darn it. You don't have to mess around with that. That seems silly, right? You just push a button and it deploys, right? And the downside is, of course, you have to, if you're going to close it with one hand, you got to push that button again and then you have to work against the spring tension to get it down, which is something that people will adapt to if you've never EDC an automatic knife. But it's a little bit, at first, you're, you got to make sure that your hands are holding on to it, and then you got to keep that tension down, because if you slip, then it might throw the blade, and you might drop it down a well, or something. I don't know. It's just one of those adaption things. It's like what I talk about with front flippers. It's not quite as common as what we see. You know, we see the, the thumb hole openers. We see, you know, flipper tabs, and then we see the thumb stud openers, and those, generally speaking, are what people are used to, I think, right? So, there you go. It deploys. It's just as high quality as any other ProTech I've ever felt. And it's actually really, really satisfying. If you've never fired an automatic knife, oh my gosh, ProTechs are satisfying. This knife has a safety feature. So if you click that thing up, you try to push the button, it's not going to deploy. Push it down. You can fire it. You can also lock it into the open position with that lock, which, okay. Uh, the button's recessed. So does it need a safety? I don't really think that automatic knives with recessed firing buttons need safeties. People are always concerned with whether or not the knife's going to go off in your pocket. I would imagine in some rare situations, people have had automatic knives like this go off in their pocket, but this is how I carry my knife. I'm right-handed, so it's up, you know, clipped into the pants, and then it's all the way up against the back seam of the pocket. So the button, which is recessed, is up against, up against my leg. It would take a very strange and circumstantial force to actually get that button to be pressed and then to get the blade to want to fire. But again, it's trapped up against the back seam of my pocket. Something would actually have to be in my pocket, sandwiched between the button and my leg, and then I would have to, I don't know, maybe dancing and, and bumping my hips into people <laughs> to get that to deploy. That's a scenario that I could, that is in my head for this general moment, but not a natural one. So should you be concerned with a knife like this going off in your pocket? No. Um, other knives like single action OTFs, I would say are far more dangerous. Um, when we're talking about like ProTech, like the Dark Angel, I'm, I'm a little reserved to carry something like that. And the Microtech Halo 6, even though that knife does have a safety and kind of an interesting mechanism to keep. Anyways, those are a little bit more concerning. Stuff like this, no, I don't think so. I don't think it needs the safety, but... You know, if you lay your knife down on a surface and maybe there's other people around and you're concerned with a situation where you might not be paying attention and somebody could actually come up, pick this thing up, right? Well, at least there's one additional block to keep so you can run across the room and go, no! You know, what happens with uh, people who have not handled automatic knives before, generally, I always tell people, I'm like, hey, check this out, but seriously, hold on to it. Because when you push that button, it's going to fly out of your hand. Scared my mom half to death. I'll never hand her an auto again. And that was my fault. But uh, I said, mom, hang on to this. It's going to fly out of your hand. And she's like, oh, you know, I don't like these. And I get that. That was not my mom's fault. That was my fault. And it flew out of her hands. Everybody was fine, right? But yeah, that's so maybe I guess in that situation, maybe the safety is somewhat more beneficial. I don't really think that it needs it. 
Fit and finish, I don't know that I really need to talk about this, but I will for people who aren't familiar with ProTech. Fit and finish is excellent. Uh, nice uh, chamfering all the way around. Screws fit into place just fine. Everything's great. Po quality of the pocket clip is great. Quality of the uh, blade is great. The finish looks awesome. The uh, final uh, cutting bevel is symmetrical on each side. Edges are nicely knocked down. It's all excellent, guys. It's more of the same from Protec. It's wonderful. Don't be afraid of picking up a Protec knife. They can be expensive. I get it. But you're definitely getting quality. Why didn't we do a hardware check on this guy? This is using Hex. Uh, that's fine. I don't really have a problem with Hex and their high quality. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> These are high quality hex uh, uh, screws and things like that. Um, but uh, in terms of, you know, finding the tool that you would need to disassemble this, yeah, it's going to be pretty simple. I don't know why they don't use Torx, but they don't. So whatever. They do use Torx for the pocket clip screws. Those are T6, but okay. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward if you want to do that. These are going to be a little bit more complicated to put back together because you have that that torsion spring torsion thing in there. Um, but generally speaking, I, I, you know, I, I can't say that you're going to have more trouble with this than something like a bench made with an axis lock. Right. Anyways. Um, I love the look of the blade. In fact, the reason I, I was so attracted to this knife originally that I really sought it out is because of the profile. I really, really like how this looks. And I'm always attracted to knives that have this choil that just sort of turns into the blade, right? Because, these types of designs don't have, it's sometimes sharpening tools can get hung up on things or sometimes with knives like that, sometimes maybe the nub, right? Or something like that. Can get this is both a sharpening choil and a means of choking up that work really, really well. And you're not going to have anything, generally speaking, get caught in the cutting path. I like that a lot. This does not come down to a laser beam of an edge, but it does come down to a nice, reasonably thin edge that will make general EDC tasks pretty simple. It's also definitely going to be a pokey puncture, right? So your breaching tasks, things like that are going to be made pretty simple by this tip. I'm not going to tell you guys there's an enormous amount of material, material out of the tip. So even though we do have a reasonably tough steel here, S35VN, uh, that's, this is not a, I wouldn't be jamming this thing in and doing an enormous amount of prying with it, right? I wouldn't be doing any prying with any folding knife or any automatic knife, right? But I'm not going to tell you guys that's a super durable tip. But we do have a flat that carries out about 60% the length of the blade. So there's reasonable durability in this area. And then it tapers out to a nice thin tip. I like how the swedge look, I, looks. I like how Protex uh, tumbled finish looks. You can get these knives in a wide variety of different finishes, or I've seen them anyway. DLC, satin finish, right? I think they've even done some interesting, like some of the rose gold finish or the FDE finish. Lots of stuff. It's general ProTec. That's generally what you see with a lot of their knives. You can see the ProTec USA logo right there, which I, I think is fine. It doesn't bother me. I love that these are made in the United States. It just doesn't bother me to see that there. And then it says S35VN, which is a wonderful steel. One of my favorite steels of all time. Corrosion resistant, uh, it's going to be reasonably tough, holds a good edge, and is very easy to sharpen. This is an excellent, well-rounded steel for general EDC, or I would imagine in a first responder scenario, right? On the other side, it doesn't say anything, which is great. It doesn't need to say anything else. There is a large lanyard loop back here, um, and maybe first responders would make better use of that. Oftentimes, I poke fun at lanyard holes and whatever, but you know what? It's totally out of the way. They um, prioritize the pocket clip, and it is absolutely deep with recessed screws, so in and out of the pocket, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I kind of wish it was shorter. This is a really long clip, and it has the swoop right here, so grabbing it and pulling it out is just fine. Getting it back into the pocket, you might fight it a little bit because the bill is not a continuous. Like, if it ended right here, you could just push it with one hand, and it'll rise to meet the whatever you know, pocket seam thickness. With this bill, you might have to lift it up, right? A first responder is going to be concerned with getting it out and deploying it, right? And it does that, right? Getting it out, deploying it, and holding on to it. We're good in that department, absolutely. Pushing it back in the pocket, which is something that when I use my knife and I have to, you know, I'm like talking with it. Usually there's other people around me and I'm talking while I'm working. I make the cut and I put it away. And then I, I got to stop to lift my pocket and push the thing in it. It's a mild inconvenience, but it is something that I found that's a little bit obnoxious. That's why I don't like these bills. I wish this pocket clip was no longer than this, and I wish it came down and then up, continuous swoop, and that would have been great. But this isn't a bad clip. I would, I'd give it still a solid A minus. It's just fine. The sur surface on top, you know, right, that you're squishing uh, the the pocket seam between the clip and the surface right so in and out of the pocket it's just fine this is a little bit more chalky than polished titanium but it should come in and out of the pocket just fine there is no blade play up down left or right on this guy which is awesome and the blade is centered protect does an excellent job with that 
So all the way around, little things that I can complain about for me, that I like when I'm going to be using this day to day, I don't need the safety. Um, the knife, you know, in some situations when you are putting it away, you are going to be fighting the tension and that's just the nature of an automatic knife. Uh, this has a uh, confining ergonomic space. Like you, you have to put your hands in a specific spot. So it's not like you have the freedom to get in the most comfortable position, but you are definitely locked in. So that's one of those things that's kind of a wash, right? Um, the pocket clip is a little bit long. I wish it was a little bit shorter. Um, I don't know that I really can complain too much about this. I really love the dimensions and I just love Protex quality. The general issue with this knife is consistent availability. They are available for a while and then they're not available and they're available. And that's kind of the case with Protex knives, right? Some of their models tend to hang around a lot longer. Um, but, uh, this one is, I, I, I remember seeing like it in plentiful supply and then all of a sudden it was just gone and it was gone for a while. And then, then they kind of came back. So that's kind of going to be the case. Also, this knife in its basic form, like this is one of the most basic versions of this knife that you can get. It comes in between 200 and 210 bucks. If there are less expensive versions of these out there, I, I'm not aware of them. Perhaps in the past, if the blade steel was made out of something different or just because Protex pricing used to be a little bit different. That seems a bit high for me, uh, to me. Uh, this feels 180-ish, 185, but they're not really that much. They're not that far over my uh, lit. Uh, so it's one of those things. Can I choke down an extra 20 bucks to pick this knife up? Yeah, I think I can. Uh, overall, this knife is very, very recommendable. Uh, if you have an opportunity to pick this up, if you like how it looks, yeah, go for it. I think this is great. Very recommendable knife. I'll be including this right down in the description. This will also be going on my most recommended knives playlist. I don't know that there's anything else to say. This was one of the most straightforward reviews. It was one of those things where I imagined what I would think about this knife. I, uh, I requested uh, that somebody send this for review so that I could handle it because I thought I would like it. And I did. I liked it just about exactly as much as I thought that I would. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, one other little complaint. I wish this area right here was a full circle so it was a little more comfortable, right? But that would technically change the design. They might have to change something else about the shape of the tank, which might affect how the knife functions. So maybe that would have been a more complicated issue. But again, minor nitpick. This knife is very, very recommendable. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.